Welcome back to Mastering Fusion 2.5. In this video, we're going to be making a custom window for your game using the window control and mouse object. Let's go through exactly what we have here in this scene setup already. So we have the window title bar, which is a active gradient object. You can change colors 1 and 2 and it's if it's either horizontal or vertical it's pretty pretty simple uh, we have the mouse object it's responsible for controlling different mouse things like setting the mouse position on the screen or getting it on, like on the screen not in the game and window control which is responsible for well controlling the window <laughs> obviously and we have three different actives uh, representing the buttons. I made the graphics for these in here, it's pretty simple. And yeah, let's get to it. In this uh, title bar we have a bunch of uh, values that I initialized here. So you have mouse initial x, y, window initial x, y, when we restored x, y. Okay. And First, we need to set up the application so that uh, this menu bar and window heading is disabled so that we can use this fancier one that we have full control over. So, in the application properties, uh, in the window section, disable heading and heading when maximized, as well as menu displayed on boot up. I mean, the user can still press F8 if they like, but if, if you don't want that menu bar at all, you can just disable it. And now, if you press F8, nothing happens. So now we have uh, this window here, and we need to add some functionality to it. So let's, let's work our way down the list. Let's do uh, resizing and uh, dragging the window around. So, with resizing, what I mean by resizing is maximizing or restoring the window, and not not like actual resizing. That is even worse. Haven't uh, worked on an example for that yet, but I might make a part two for this. So, mouse user clicks on an object. Click on the maximize button. We want to toggle a flag. Let's add a few flags to this a bar thing. Okay, uh, maximized and position restored. I'll go back to position restored in a minute after we do like the restore part of it. But maximizing should be pretty easy. We just, uh, whenever we click on this guy, uh, we're gonna flags toggle flag uh, zero in this case maximized. Okay, and I like to compare flags like this. So flags maximized equals zero or one. Um, we want to resize, maximize, r restore window, okay? We want to resize, maximize window. And that's going to take care of it. Now, we're going to make it so that the bar actually goes up to the screen and like uh, stays the same size and these buttons follow it. So. For that, we want to make an always event, and we want to set the width of the bar to the application client area, and we want that to be the minimum. Uh, we want the minimum of that to be 640. Hey guys, this is Anything Me, and I just wanted to quickly correct past me here uh, by just saying that um, 
the formula is actually meant to be the one on the screen right now and you'll see that I, I realized this later in the video and it's no big deal so yeah I'm gonna set the frame window width to application window declined width and we are going to adjust frame size now you may not want to adjust frame size depending on your use case uh, I'll make a separate video when we do the custom UI thing uh, the custom UI series on how we do this with scrolling included because uh, scrolling with this is going to be a, a, bit, a bit more tricky I mean it's going to involve a bunch of uh, like it's, it's going to involve like a lens object uh, I'm thinking, I mean, I, I did not experiment with this yet, but I can definitely do it. So, uh, yeah, anyways. Uh, we're going to set the height of the frame window to application window, vertical size of client area. And we're going to adjust the frame size as well. And now if we maximize, we'll see that the bar goes back there, which means that we can now expand this thing to fill up the entire screen. Okay. I forgot how the mid-max functions work. I think it is max. Yes. Like this. Ah, okay. We want to position these guys to the right edge to, of the uh, act, active gradient object. So, set x coordinate to bar, position x coordinate of right edge. Minus uh, width of close. Minus width of close. Minus width of maximize. Yes. Minus a width minimize. That way, if we ever decide to change the sprites, you can see that they will stay in that corner. So and now if I enlarge the close icon for some reason, we can now do that. Now, uh, let's add the easy stuff. Close and minimize uh, and the application and resize minimize window. Okay, yep. Okay, yeah, this, this is what I was talking about. Max. 640 yes okay and 480 I think we need to check run when minimized and resizing I forgot the only one action when event loops here so that it, it constantly set it to restored and maximized my bad guys okay right uh, now okay so we have this and now we want to work on actually being able to move the window around. We need to come up with a new event. Mouse repeat mouse key is pressed. Certain mouse, mouse pointer is over. That thing. Okay, uh, one more thing we need to add to this. A new flag. Uh, moving. Yes. Good. And insert flags is off moving. And only one action on event loops. We're going to have flags set on moving. And when the user is no longer holding the mouse button down, the flags set off moving. Okay, we need to see if flag moving is on. If moving is on, uh, and then here we need to set the values that I talked about at the beginning to uh, the specific values they need to be. So I'm going to set mouse initial x to x mouse x of mouse object and set the mouse initial y to uh, mouse y mouse object. And 
Auth values set window initial acts to application window horizontal position. Uh, Auth values set window initial y to application window vertical position. Okay, and when the flag moving is on, we need to uh, set the position of the window, set x coordinate to. Okay, let's think of this logically. So, we need the initial position of the window. So, values window initial x plus the distance between the current mouse position and the initial mouse position. So, we want the current mouse position minus the initial mouse position. There we go. That's it. And now we can move this around on the x-axis only. <laughs> uh, now, I have a 144 FPS monitor and you may want to increase the frame rate and use the delta time thing that I talked about in the first video to make this look as smoothly as possible across the screen. So, yeah. It's pretty easy so far. And we're going to do the same thing for the vertical position. Set Y coordinate to uh, values window initial Y plus the distance between the mouse current Y position and the initial mouse current Y, y position. Uh, yeah, values, mouse initial Y. There we go. And lo and behold, we have a window. Okay, so now we have this problem where the window maximizes itself just fine, but then when you restore it, it restores itself back to the top left corner. And we don't want that to happen. Uh, I guess we could m m maximize this as zero, right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, yeah, we we don't need uh, the restored values here, I guess. So, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I didn't think that this was possible, but we, here we go. We did it in way less code. And I think, yeah, it knows how to jump back to the original spot. Okay. Well, <laughs> I guess this is it for the tutorial. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. See, so, yeah, I, I found out something new today as well. And, yeah. Uh, we're going to make the UI series after I... I I'm going to work on the UI series after I... Uh, finish mastering Fusion 2.5. We got like uh, five more episodes to go, or six, depending on how I lay them out. So, yeah, this has been episode five, and I'll see you in the next one.